talk with our guy Brett Good, former Razorback, former Packer. Brett, we were joking a little bit earlier. Is Aaron Rodgers, like when, when you think about the potential of him being the permanent Jeopardy host, would the executives at is it NBC? Where's it at? Would they be making a mistake if they, they put Joe Buck in that slot over Aaron Rodgers? You know, trying to be <laughs> pious there, there's a lot of people, you know, with Joe Buck, he, he's a commentator, and he's, he's very professional, but, you know, kind of like y'all were talking about earlier, you know, that, those would be comebacks. Aaron is definitely going to bring that in. He's also going to bring in a younger a younger crowd, and I saw a bunch of people talking about, the, you know, the female crowd uh, of coming on to join him. I think he definitely would, would be the longer-term fix for that of, you know, the love of the game show. And he's already posted that he could do both. And I, I think being used to, on the bye weeks, going to do commercials, uh, you know, and do all these other things that he does mm-hmm. with his busy schedule, I think he would definitely, you know, entertain that idea. Yeah, it should be. Uh, should, I think it would, it would make me want to watch more often, and uh, maybe I'd learn something from it. All right, let's get back to the news of the day. And what we were just discussing, Mike Woods has entered his name into the transfer portal. It's inevitable he's going to leave and play somewhere else. Your thoughts and, and the impact it's going to uh, create for this offense next year with your number two receiver leaving Fayetteville? Well, losing your number two receiver always hurts. Um, you know, and I started kind of digging into his stats after after he left. You know, he, he only had three games where his long reception it was, was 50 yards or more. Everything else was under 20 yards. So, you know, you're really only losing a little over three catches a game. And in and, and a deep threat, you know, yes, he can do it, but he wasn't really consistent with it over that three-game stretch. Um, so it's going to have to be next man up, you know, and that's the way the receiving core is going to have to be. We're going to throw some tight ends out there. Um, you're hoping, you know, Trey Knox comes out of the slump uh, with his big body and, and is able to take some pressure off Trey on Burks because what, what's going to happen now is, is going into the season, everybody's just going to, what we thought, would double up you know, trade on and and then show me something, and that's what's yeah. going to happen. And until we can maybe get a deep threat to come out and come alive and take that role over, you know, we may not see a lot from Burks. We don't know that, um, but it, it's unfortunate that we're just leaving. But you know, being a graduate transfer type type situation, it's different than just than just transferring. I, I saw all the other day where there's like four thousand kids in the transfer portal. <laughs> I think only like 60 at signed. So, you yeah. know, there's a lot of kids that they think that the grass is greener and, and it actually ends up getting tougher to sign somewhere. So what should be the thoughts right now of K.J. Jefferson, the presumed starter for this football team, knowing he is losing a number two wide receiver? And second part to the question, how much more of an emphasis or how important does now it's just these guys getting together and throwing and catching in the summer and him getting some chemistry built with some other guys how much more important does that become for kj jefferson at this point it's huge we've got to you know we've got to be able to throw the football in the sec and then they've got to make those connections so all these voluntary workouts and everything of that nature if you want to be good you're, you're doing those workouts you're getting together with all, all your guys out there and and you're having, you know, a good throwing session, and you're getting that relationship built, and, and Horns is going to be there as well. And, and that you want him there because you want the competition between the two, um, and it might be end up being a one-two punch between the two. You know, as, as the season gets going, we don't know that for sure until, you know, we kick off and see everything going live action and guys getting tackled and, you know, how both of our quarterbacks can kind of handle, you know, being able to run the football because um, I think we're going to kind of rely on their both of their legs, you know, kind of push our offense down the field. So, this time of year is, is critical. We, we come out of spring. We had a good spring. You know, for the most part, stayed healthy. Uh, the, the, your guys that you want. Yes, you're losing Woods, but you know we've got some. We got some depth at receiver now that we haven't had in years past, and we've got depth at tight end. So I, I think we're going to be okay. I don't think it's a, a massive blow, but it, these these summer workouts going into fall camp are just going to be. Because you see, like, in the NFL, you see guys across the country, all these throwing sessions. And, and what they do is they're just building those relationships. And you know that your guy's going to be there. The ball's going to be in the place it needs to be. And so you trust that when you're running your route. Brett Good with us here on the Morning Rush. Brett, you mentioned the depth in the wide receiver room. I know people are excited about Devion Warren coming back after the ACL injury, Jaqueline Crawford, the Oklahoma transfer. Uh, we were talking about hopefully – Trey Knox will have a resurgence. John David White. Is there anyone in particular outside of Burks, because we know what he brings to the table, that you anticipate stepping up this fall? 
Well, I think hopefully you want Trey to, uh, you know, because Trey, Trey having a big body, he can go up with those one on one battles. And if you get somebody like that down the red zone, that helps you out tremendously. Um, you know, it, it allows you to spread the field open. Plus, with our tight end, you know, you kind of get a lot of we- weapons down there. And, and red zone scoring is so big. You know, just like we were talking about Woods, you know, he only had three games with 50 or more yards on for his long catches. So we're going to get down in those red zones and have some short field, and we've got to win those one on one battles. So you're hoping that he comes out. Um, Devion, you know, after the ACL, you're hoping everything, you know, is full on that. And, and the biggest thing with that is just the confidence in that leg and, and knowing that, you know, you can you take that first real hit and realize it's going to be okay. Um, then things kind of ease up for him. So I think he'll, he'll be okay coming out of that. And, and it's just those guys getting down there, you know, in the offseason workouts and trusting each other on, you know, those corner routes, those post routes, you know, the back shoulder routes and all these things that you can do in the red zone, and you hope that they can kind of come out and, and have some confidence in that. Brad, on the note of Devion's injury, what's the toughest injury that you've suffered throughout your playing career, and how, how long did it take you to fully recover, not only physically, but mentally from that? Well, so I actually tore my ACL with two games left in the season in December. Um, it was in Oakland, California. It's actually the last stadium I had to get to reach all 32 stadium. Um, so that took me, I felt really comfortable about six months. I didn't have any live action until nine. It was exactly nine months to the day, pretty much that I, you know, was game week going in, into training camp. And, and, and it is, it is worrisome when you get hit. It's, you kind of go down and you're like, is it going to hold up? Because the entire time of rehab, you're obviously not getting hit on that leg. Uh, but you just, you kind of do the process. You go through the whole thing of all the rehab and it's, it's a grind. And, you know, you got to retrain yourself to run and, and build that strength back up in that leg. And that's what I'm saying. As soon as he kind of gets that first couple of hits in, uh, you kind of start to relax a little bit. And the kind of timeline on an ACL that I was always told is if you tear it again within 12 months, it has to do with that same surgery. But if you tear it after 12 months, it's a completely re-tear, um, you know, that, that would have happened anyway. And so I'm not a doctor, but that's kind of what they told me along the way. Last Saturday was the red-white game. I know you were watching. There was a replay last night for those that didn't watch the stream. Give us your, your thoughts. What, what, what did your eyes see when you watched these two teams in a, in a structured practice? I mean, we call it a game, but, but this was an orchestrated practice set up by the coaches. It was, and, and, you know, I think we talked about last week, that, you know, the effort and guys flying around and having fun. I think that's the biggest thing that takes away is that guys are moving around. Guys are, are playing off of each other, reacting to each other. Guys are wanting to be on the field. Um, I know Coach Pittman talked about, you know, the tough, toughness being out there. Guys, probably in the past, they get a little banged up. They go off and don't come back for a long time. And we, we had some guys kind of get banged up and come back the next series. So that's, that's the improvements that we've, we've already seen this coaching staff going into year two and then pretty much their first full spring. And, you know, you're, you're building this, this chemistry with this team. And this team's chemistry is, is you know, surprisingly really strong right now. And, and that's great moving forward into the summer months. And I, I can see, just like we were talking about the quarterbacks and the receivers throwing this summer, I see a lot of these offensive line, defense line, and linebackers, all these groups getting together and holding these, you know, these workouts with, with themselves on these voluntary bases. And, and kind of see, you know, we got something special moving for this program right now, and I can see them taking that, and you got to take ownership and just move forward. What were your thoughts on the defense knowing that Barry Odom had limited blitz packages and stunts that, that he was going to be allowed to call? Your, your thoughts on the battle at that line of scrimmage and, and the defense's attack on the offense in those, in those one-on-one battles we saw Saturday? And that's always tough, you know, spring football, and, and I always feel like the Pro Bowl, you know, there's no blitzing, you don't see the true <laughs> defense, and, and it's just all one-on-one, and it's the guys winning the one-on-one battles, and, and I thought they did well. Um, it's obviously the defense gets an advantage when, once you start blitzing, and, and the offensive line I thought did well, and, you know, the, the big surprise was I, I think we didn't seem to get off every, you know, for the receivers, they didn't seem to get off the line as well as some of the offensive line, but the, their feet looked good. Um, the movement and, and the energy. I, I thought that they kind of knew what was going on, which again kind of goes, you know, a couple of years ago, we're, we're coached well. We we know that the gaps that we're supposed to hit, and yeah, we're, you know, we're obviously making mistakes, but it's still early. Um, and it, you just want to correct those mistakes and keep that same energy. Because if, if you can play fast and kind of know what you're doing, you know, you're going to make mistakes, but you're going to be in the right situation a lot of times. To your trained eye, did anyone on the line of scrimmage, offense or defense, uh, was there a player a name you can give us that stood out to you based on their technique or their performance or something that your eye caught that you saw on Saturday 
Did you see anything in the trenches that, that stood out to you? It wasn't anything that, for me personally that it stood out a lot. It, it, it's so hard when you're not there and you don't see the actual, you know, the coach's film. Um, you know, I, I obviously didn't get to go to the game. I had some stuff going on. So to, to not be able to see that and just kind of focus in and, and zone in the entire time, um, I, I don't want to commit to that. But I will say, like, you know, the, the toughness of those guys, the grit, you know, the offensive line, you, you really see them, you know, they, they're communicating well. And, and obviously they're not blitzing on defense, but that talking, that chatter that you're, you're creating, that cohesiveness, that's what you want out of those guys because when, when they start working as a group and they start relying on their buddy and they're just trusting that process, you know, th- then it creates winners uh, across that offensive line. All right, Brett Good, former Razorback, Super Bowl champion with the Green Bay Packers. He's with us every Wednesday here on the Morning Rush. The rest of the time, he's trying to save you money on insurance, whether it's your group benefits at work, whether it's health or life uh, insurance needs, whether it's the staffing management solutions you need, whether it's a 401K or retirement program set up at work, Brett can do that for you. Brett, also, uh, if someone's listening this morning, they need a better deal in their home and auto, uh, life insurance for themselves or commercial insurance, you do it all. That's right. We can do it all. Home auto, any time's a good time to buy that. Life insurance, we always want to sell that. You know, even on, on the group benefits we took yesterday, and we had a problem with a, a group's payroll. And so we broke that down over the last five months. And, and uh, you just kind of crunch the numbers and try and help you save a little money so we can kind of do it all. 651-2292 is Brett's direct number. That's 479-651-2292. Call or text pretty much any time. You'll get back with them. I'll get back as soon as I can. If I if I miss it, if I happen to fall asleep, I'll text you as soon as I wake up in the morning. <laughs> All right. 651-2292. Brett Good, Henderson Phillips, Employer Solutions. Uh, buddy, we'll talk next week. All right. Thanks, guys.